Speaking of confused, the Daily Star has, here's, here's the headline anyway. Most people want to have sex with robots. New robo-sexuality study reveals. Okay. Well, the article says, new research has revealed who would most likely be interested in having sex with robots. Technology has moved on in leaps and bounds from the days of blow-up dolls to realistic sex robots, which have been built to satisfy, quote-unquote, while a few have made their way onto the market, development continues to improve on what's available. Along with the vast shift towards looking realistic, investing in new sex aids has never been easier. For the shy folk who didn't relish the idea of strolling into a store and pulling one down off the shelf, internet shopping has put put uh, put that uh, put pay to that awkward encounter. Put pay has put pay to that awkward encounter. But who's most likely to invest? Is it a perv-only pursuit, or would easily embarrassed others take the plunge now that they can find they can hide behind a keyboard? Luckily, a couple of boffins in Canada. This is the most British article I've ever read. A couple of boffins in Canada sought to find out uh, the answers by probing a number of undergraduates at their disposal. Yeah, I'm not going to read this anymore. Anyway, um, the point is that they that they did this study to find out who will be likely to uh, take advantage of sex dolls, and they found some characteristics. The problem is that, you know, the headline says that most people want sex robots. Um, I don't see where the actual text of the article lays that out, that most people want that. I'm not sure where they get the most people from. But I have no doubt that a lot of people right now would take advantage of this option if it was made available to them. And, uh, and, and I also have no doubt, whether there's any study that bears this out right now or not, I have no doubt personally that eventually most people would be quote unquote robosexuals, which is apparently a term now uh, because the stage has been set for this. Now, first of all, we, we normalized alternative quote unquote sexualities. That's already been done. Second, we have millions of people who are already hooked on, on, you know, virtual sex in the form of internet porn. Third, we have a, a loneliness epidemic of people feeling isolated and alone and, and desperate for human connection. Um, and, uh, and we've removed, you know, shame and, and stigma. And now you develop technology to actually have sex, have sex robots. You make them cheap enough for people to buy and you remove all the stigma around it. Um, if that happens, then yeah, I think you're going to see probably billions of people who are sexually active exclusively with robots. I, I think that is the future we're heading into. It's kind of the final stage. It's the conclusion that we have been setting up for. And then when that happens, like, well, well, then you have the extinction of the human race. Basically, that's that's it. That's that's the end. That's what does it. Um, and it's not just that people won't reproduce anymore. You know, birth rates are already plummeting. plummeting. Young people are already foregoing marriage and family life. Um, and then you give people robots as a sexual outlet, and you've just kind of put the final nail in the birth rates coffin. Uh, so that, but it's not just that. I mean, that, that, that's the big thing. That's the main thing. I sent a portrait to Paint Your Life a few years ago. The process was super quick and uh, very easy. I love their work so much that I've used them multiple times since then. With Mother's Day and Father's Day around the corner, Paint Your Life is the perfect gift for somebody you love in your life. They create hand-painted portraits that fit almost any budget, and they're a great gift idea for your mother, your father, or both. Paint Your Life seriously transforms your photos into a one-of-a-kind, beautiful, hand-painted portrait by a professional artist what I really love is how they can create anything you imagine. Put yourself in a location you've always wanted to go or add a lost loved one to a special occasion to create the portrait of your dreams. You could choose the artist and art medium, whether that's oil, acrylic, watercolor, or charcoal. They even have a great selection of quality frames. Their user-friendly platform lets you order a custom-made hand-painted portrait in less than five minutes, and you will receive your professional hand-painted portrait in as little as two weeks Give the most meaningful gift with paintyourlife.com. There's no risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded, guaranteed. And right now is a limited time offer. Get 20% off on your painting plus free shipping. To get a special offer, text the word MATT to 87204. That's MATT to 87204. Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter most. Message and data rates may apply. See terms for details. I think the other thing, though, is that we're taking away everything that drives and motivates people, especially men. 
We're taking away all the reasons people have, or rather have had in the past, to, to like leave their homes and, uh, and more than leave their homes, actually go out and achieve great things. Um, and like I said, this is not a problem that begins with the pro- proliferation of sex robots. That, that will be the culmination, you know, uh, but it's already happening. You know, I've been reading um, a book right now by Hampton Sides called The Wide, Wide Sea. And uh, I'm a huge fan of the author Hampton Sides. Strongly recommend the book. As you know, I love books about old explorers. And this one is, uh, is about the final vo- voyage of Captain James Cook. This was a guy in the, in the 1700s who traveled all over the globe. Uh, tens of thousands of miles all around the globe, east to west, north to south, discovering new land, you know, reshaping the map, changing the world as it was at the time. And what I love about these stories, and the thing that draws me to them, is that these are stories of men who are driven to do extraordinary things and endure just incredible hardship and deprivation. Because back in the 18th century, and for centuries before that, and for at least a century after that, going on a voyage across the ocean, that was, you know, it was a death sentence for a huge number of the men that were on the ship. They, they knew before they set sail that probably half of them would die and wouldn't, would never see their homes again. And when they die, they die horribly, like die of scurvy and dysentery and hypothermia and starvation, like the worst possible ways. And uh, if you got on one of these ships, it's like there's a 50% chance that's going to happen to you. Or they might die in more horrifying ways than that. They might die, they might get uh, kidnapped and eaten by cannibals on an island somewhere. And that could happen too. And even if they survive, they're still going to be stuck on a ship for years, years and years at a time with rats and roaches and the stench of human waste. And, you know, it's either too cold or too hot and it's wet all the time. And you're eating stale, moldy bread and salty, spoiled meat. Just an absolutely torturous experience. And yet these guys would willingly sign up for the for that experience. They would sign up to do it. They were eager to do it. Um, Why is that? I'm just fascinated by the why. Why did they do it? Especially because it's so different from the way people are wired today. The idea of anyone willingly putting themselves into a position like that, foregoing comfort to that extent, it's just unthinkable. People will not do it. But back then they did, and um, as to the why, there isn't one answer. You know, they were motivated by the desire to explore, the desire to find out what the world looked like, just pure curiosity was was something, Uh, the desire to spread the gospel in in many cases. There was also a profit motive, you know, they dreamed of riches and resources and everything, and they did it for honor, for respect, for increasing their station in life. And um, all of these powerful human desires drove them to do incredible, courageous things. Now, what does it have to do with sex robots? Well, the point is that the more that people are are satiated, the more that their base desires are met and met on demand in their homes, like just snap of the finger and that's it. No effort required. The more that ha- that happens, the less they're motivated to go out and pursue anything. Uh, their base desires are met all the time, always, at a moment's notice. And after a while, they don't even develop any other higher sort of desires, any loftier desires. All they have are the base ones. And even the, the base desires, they don't feel those with any great passion or intensity. Uh, because the satiation of that desire is always within arm's reach. And so again, we're already, this is the world we already live in, where people just don't, there's no reason to leave your house. It's like everything, why, why even leave? Uh, and, and, and the idea, like if you do leave your house, okay, you leave and you come back. But the idea of leaving to do something great and embrace hardship knowingly, well, that, I think, to most people is, is unthinkable. They would never do it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, that, that's the trend, and there's no signs of it slowing down, unfortunately. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Walsh Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.